Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is Mark Goldberg. Welcome to the program. Welcome to the show. I'd like to talk to you today about a really cool watch that I'm so glad that I have the opportunity to try out. But before we get to it, it's time for the quick fist watch check. Just sit there. I'll take care of everything. And here it is. That is right, fellas. Today, I am wearing the object of today's video. It's brand new. Still got the, the, the price tag hanging off of it. The uh, Omega Aquaterra World Timer. I'm thrilled for a variety of reasons to have the opportunity to review this watch. So first, my thanks to Nick over at Exquisite Timepieces. ExquisiteTimepieces.com. Tell Nick I sent you. They sell 50 different brands of watches, including Rolex, although used. However, Omega and 49 other brands of watches, they sell new box and papers as an AD. Guys, this is a watch that I've had my eyes on for a really long time. Now, there are a variety of reviews of the World Time Aquaterra out there. So throughout this video, I'm going to be playing some of the specs for you. But this, this particular video, it's a Goldberg hot take is what's going to be. It's more about the, the owning experience, the wearing experience, the feel, the emotions that this watch evokes in me and, uh, and may well in you as well, uh, rather than just a, like a spec sheet. So specs are going to be running uh, willy nilly. It has some good ones, like just the one I'll mention right off the bat that I really like is two things is uh, it's got water, good water resistance. It's 150 meters water resistance. Your average world timer is not something that you should be snorkeling around with in the Bahamas. And that means if you wore it to the beach, you're taking it off and you're sticking it in your shoe or in your backpack, you know, and you're leaving it by the side of the pool or the beach. And I don't like that idea one little bit. I also love to wear my watches. So if I go any place, uh, you know, I wanna, I wanna wear it with. So number one, thing that I notice is the water resistance about this watch. And number two is the loom. It's a little tricky for loom. Stay tuned to the end. I, I always think loom is important, even in a kind of a dressy watch. This, this is a dressy-ish watch, but it's definitely a sports watch in my opinion. So make sure you watch to the end where there will be a thorough loom shot and we will go over everything there. Okay, so eventually we're going to turn this camera around and look at it much more closely, movement and strap and everything like that. But first, it fits super comfortably. What I want to tell you is I got it kind of loose here right now. I like my watches sloppy, but this is extra sloppy. And for reference, I have, an, a, I have a seven and a quarter inch wrist. Magnificent wrists. Look how, look how flat and broad my wrists are. And my, my, my beautifully configured wrists are actually a bit of a problem when it comes to straps, and I'm gonna tell you why. If you have a round wrist, well then a rubber one, a rubber strap wants to just kind of like configure all the way around your wrist, it's gonna feel good. Um, the, the problem with this wrist configuration, beautiful though it may be, I turned down constant offers for um, wrist modeling. <laughs> but um, the, the problem with this wrist as, as it pertains to the average rubber strap is that the strap kind of bows out at the ends, you know, here. So like I get, when, when, they, when they tighten up, I get a bow here and here, which basically gives me a case of wrist claustrophobia because I feel squeezing here and I don't like that. This, this rubber strap kind of has like a, a, a gradient imprint to it and some beautiful blue stitching also. For whatever reason, Omega has just nailed everything that should be correct about a rubber strap and never is. So I, I can't believe it does come also on a bracelet. But to be honest with you, by the time you put this, this sucker on a bracelet, it's going to feel kind of heavy. Um, it isn't top heavy. It balanced very well. But what I love is the lightness of this strap. Plus, I like the fact that it is um, sporty. I can take it into the water. I, I hate a leather strap. You sweat, the leather is going to start stinking. You have a dive watch or a watch with some waterproofing. That's not a dive watch, but definitely 150 meters water resistance. I want to be able to take it into the pool or the shower or, you know, whatever wet area I happen to encounter myself in. And uh, I don't want to have to be worrying about the strap. Stupidest thing is a dive watch and a leather strap. Who does that? But this is brilliant. It's a, uh, it's kind of a dressy looking strap, but it is rubber. So it's going to last a tremendously long time. One thing I dearly love about it is look how the strap just integrates right into the case. 
absolutely beautiful. Also, one of the things that I, another thing that I dislike about straps is how you have to buckle them and fiddle with them. I know this is just a Goldberg weirdness, but I love being able to just open a bracelet and pick off a watch. I like the way the bracelet conforms to my wrist, number one, and I like the way they re release relatively quickly. So that is what, ooh, fly. <laughs> Looked like a biting kind of an insect, sorry. Um, <laughs> anyway, this is a double deployant clasp with the Omega logo on it. Let me give you a quick tour of the clasp. Nice scissors clasp. Integrates beautifully here, so you can quickly find whatever hole that you need to be comfortable. We've got the, um, I gotta find the camera there. Can you see that, fellas? Got the Omega imprint right here, and uh, we've got the Omega signed horseshoe logo right there. So um, it, it's just beautiful. The next thing that we really have to talk about is the dial. It really is quite spectacular, so we will get into that in more detail when I show you some close-up video, which is just gonna be in a quick second. The only other thing I wanna say is I really like the lack of crown guards. It gives it kind of a vintage -y look, which I, which I really admire in this watch. It's a big watch, but it is by no means too big. It's a little thick, but it's, but it's not unwearably thick by any stretch of the imagination. And uh, look at that domed, sort of conical-shaped bezel. Uh, it really just spectacular. The dial is cool. The loom is cool. We're going to have to talk more about both of those in just a second. But this watch is surprising me. Okay, it's surprising me. Real quick, let's just talk about how the world... <laughs> where's the camera? We're going to talk about how that world time function works. And then we're, we're going to take a closer look at the dial. And um, especially the, the map in the center of that dial. Okay, what you're seeing here, guys, is a, uh, a, a city ring. Um, on the outside of the watch, and then the military or 24-hour time on a rotating ring in the center. Unlike some world times, the, the cities remain stationary in place. The only thing that moves on this watch is the 24-hour um, ring. But one thing that's very cool is this, this watch sort of emulates the jumping hour hand of a, um, of a, of a traveling GMT. It's pulled, where the crown is pulled out and out of the first position, and I can manually wind the watch, although I don't have to do that at all. It's got a see-through case back with an automatic movement and rotor. Nicely designed rotor, which we'll look at. But I pull this crown out to the first position. And let me show you here. Now, forwards or backwards, I have a jumping hour hand, which means I'm on a plane and I got to subtract two hours from home time to my, to my new visitor's time. I can easily subtract or add hours here and that is also how we affect the date there's no quick set for the date typical with a jumping hour hand you've got to kind of ratchet it around in 24 hour increments and you can change your date right there okay let's turn this camera around and take a really close look don't forget to stay tuned for the loom well we're going to take a look here starting with the case back and you can see it's an exhibition case back and that the movement is beautifully decorated probably done by a machine but honestly very very nicely done uh, the movement is highly regulated and you have a 60 hour power reserve uh, these suckers are quite accurate nice scalloped edges on the case back you need a special tool to get in there but you're not going to be opening it there we have a look at the heartbeat of the watch also notice how they give you a little bit of room to uh, contact the spring bars on the back and the off chance that you're going to be changing your own strap to a bracelet or something like that uh, as I mentioned, I really do love this strap. Its configuration is excellent. excellent. And you'll see at the top uh, and bottom of the strap, you'll see the, the little metal piece. That's just used to help secure it. The really spectacular part of this watch is when we zoom in on this dial. And uh, of course, on the outer ring, you'll notice the cities. The inner ring are the moving 24-hour uh, time zones. That is a titanium plate. Now, to me, it's beautiful. It looks like cloisonne or enamel, fine enamel work back from the French-Russian Revolution eras. But no, it's, uh, it's laser-cut titanium. I don't know how they dye and color it, um, but you can see it has texture, and it's just spectacular. That is really worth the price of admission on this watch. I like it better than the newer version of the Aquaterra. Now, the loom... Okay, so we gotta talk about the loom. First, it's strong. It's surprisingly good for a watch of this sort, but um, hey, the, um, the minute hand has that uh, arrow 
um, at about the 20 mark, and uh, I find that weird. It's just an arrow. Um, so the loom is strong, but I don't even think it's all that crazy legible, if you ask me. And it's a little hard to orient the watch and figure out where's the 12 and where's the 6. Okay, guys, before I peace out, I just want to thank Nick again over there at uh, ExquisiteTimePieces.com. Naples, Florida with a bricks and mortar store, but a wonderful website, ExquisiteTimePieces.com. Glad to have the opportunity to review some watches that these guys have lent me. Uh, really nice people to deal with. And I have bought several Omega watches from them in the past, so don't hesitate to reach out to those guys. And drop a Goldberg bomb when you do, that way they know how, how you found them. I guess what I want to wrap up on is this. Um, the Aquaterra Omega surprises me because it is that sweet spot for me of sporty and dressy. And I'm shocked by how much I like this clasp and this rubber strap. So I gotta say, this is a watch that I could live with. I'm gonna feel a little sad when I gotta turn it in. Nick, if you feel like, uh, if you feel like, if you feel like throwing a watch at me now and again, this might be the one. Goldberg usually likes dive watches, but this particular world watch, it's got the sweet spot right between sports and dressy, vacation, dress up, which I never do, but dog trainer, this is how I dress. Anyway, guys, if you have never considered a world timer, if you have never considered an Omega, look at this one for sure. Frankly, I love it. Goldberg, peace out.